Holy smokes, can you believe it's time to get started? We certainly had our fun over the summer, but now it gets real, now it gets serious, and we start our official march towards May 6th and arriving on time and ready to go for that AP exam. So uh, today our first topic, we're going to jump in, we're going to title it uh, Finding Limits Graphically, a very nice, friendly topic to start off with. We've certainly been exposed to it before. I want to revisit it. I want to highlight a few things that are really important going forward. And I tell you what, I, I came across this picture here. And, uh, you know, a lot of people just assume that this young man was coloring. And I said, absolutely not. I said, the, the only possible thing he could be working on is calculus. Because there ain't nothing else that will get you that excited, baby. Look at the expression on his face. That is just pure calculus right there. And certainly, young man's doing a nice job of attacking it with some energy there. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. Well, I want to go ahead and get away, uh, get out of the way a couple of our definition stuff before we dive into our examples. But basically, what is a limit? And I'm going to go over a few key things here. As a function gets closer and closer to a certain x value, what is the graph's, and this is my favorite word, intended height? Okay? We don't really care how tall the graph is at, say, x equals 2. We just want to know, like, what kind of height is it approaching and getting closer to? What is its intended height? And the actual... Uh, function's height um, at the x-coordinate is irrelevant. Okay, the actual height is irrelevant. It's all about the intended height, and we're going to go look at an example. So I've got a beautiful graph here for you, and if you if you can hit the pause button and take the time to sketch this, I think it'll pay off in your notebook. It doesn't have to be the most pretty or precise thing you've ever drawn, but just get it in there. And then I've posed two questions here to get us started. Uh, question number one, I want to know what is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side. You'll notice that little like negative thing above the 1, and that just means we want to approach 1 from the left. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to literally put my finger on the graph somewhere to the left of 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow that road, that blue road. And as I get closer and closer to 1, my intended height is 1. So I would say that the answer, the intended height is 1. And then as we switch, and number 2, as we, as, uh, as we approach 1 from the right side, I'm going to literally put my finger on the graph here somewhere to the right. And I'm going to get closer and closer and closer to 1. So I'm actually traveling left, uh, but I'm approaching from the right side. And again, I'm getting closer and closer to a height of 1. Um, notice the fact that um, there was a closed dot up here had no impact on those two answers. The limits don't, whether it's an open circle or a closed circle, has no influence on the answer to a limit question. Now, what these, these two questions we just did are called one-sided limits, of course. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I call a general limit. And we'll slide down here just a little bit. Okay, number three, what is the limit as x approaches 1? And this is what we call a general limit. It's not specifying a certain side. So what, in order for a general limit to exist, uh, both the left and the right limits have to agree with each other. And since they both answered 1, then the general limit also equals 1. All right, and then question four, if they ask for, you know, what is f of one, what's the function's actual height, that's the one and only time you go for the closed dot, and we would say the answer's two. All right, now let me see if I can erase all of this, and uh, maybe, 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 let's see here, we'll get started. All right, let's tackle some new questions here. All right, we'll use a different color. And I want to slide back up. All right, beautiful. Here we go. All right, let's do the limit as x approaches 2 from the left side. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally put my finger on the curve here to the left. I'm going to approach, 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 and I'm getting closer and closer to a height of 2. Um, if I come from the right side, the limit as x approaches 2. 2 from the right side. And I do want you to really appreciate the notation. Uh, there really no, are no shortcuts when it comes to good notation here. Uh, I'm going to start to the right side of 2. I'm going to approach, 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 and I'm getting closer to an intended height of 3. Now when they throw that general limit at you, and you just say, okay, what's the limit as x approaches 2? Well, because the left and the right limit did not agree with each other, we'll say they're not equal, then we're going to say that this general limit does not exist and my fourth question would probably be like, what is f of 2? And that's the one and only time you look for the closed dot, and we would go right there and we'd say, yeah, that guy's equal to 2. Okay, here's a new picture. 
<clears throat> excuse me, and I've named it G of X. And so I've posed four questions here for you. And if you're feeling pretty confident, I really encourage you to hit that pause button, take the three extra seconds it takes, and answer these four questions just to see how you're feeling. And then I'll go through and share my answers. Okay, so number one here, if I'm approaching zero from the left side, I'm going to start somewhere here to the left of zero, and I'm going to approach, 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 and it looks like I'm getting closer and closer to a height of negative one. Um, if I do the limit as x approaches zero from the right side, I'm going to start to the right of zero, literally put my finger on the graph, approach, 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 and it looks like I'm getting closer and closer to a height of three. Now here's the trick, because those one-sided limits did not agree with each other, did not equal, then we'll say the general limit down here in number three does not exist. And then for number four, we're looking for the closed dot, the actual function's value, and the closed dot had a height of three. So hopefully you're feeling pretty good about that one. All right, now I want to talk about a mini topic um, that I call end behavior, and I defined end behavior as what the graph is doing at its left and right extremities. You know, if you go to the far left edge of your screen or the far edge, right edge of your screen, you know, what kind of behavior is the graph exhibiting? Is it still unpredictable and erratic, or is it kind of settling into a pattern and becoming very predictable? Those are the questions I like to ask. So, in other words, what are we looking for here at the ends? We're looking for, actually, horizontal asymptotes. So anytime I use the terminology end of behavior, what I'm really talking about are horizontal asymptotes. So I think those two phrases are interchangeable. And here's how they're going to ask those questions. Um, number one, there's, what's the limit as x approaches infinity for this particular curve? And I would just say in, as x approaches positive infinity, I go to this edge of the screen right here, and it looks like we're settling into a height of 1, becoming very predictable. And the second question is, what is the limit as x approaches negative infinity? In other words, we're going to go to the far left edge of the screen over here. And it does. Again, it looks like it's kind of settling into a pattern. It's a settling into a height of zero. We certainly can have two horizontal asymptotes. You never have more than two because you don't have uh, more than two ends to analyze. So um, it's possible for our graph to have zero horizontal asymptotes, typical to have one, and uh, certainly possible to have two, as this picture illustrates. The, the other thing I'll point out is it is possible to crash through horizontal asymptotes here, as this graph has done twice. Um, you'll never see a graph crash a vertical asymptote, but certainly possible to crash a horizontal. So a uh, new picture here. Let's go ahead and analyze the end behavior. In other words, we're going to search and see if there's any horizontal asymptotes. Uh, the first question, what is the limit as x approaches positive infinity? So I'm going to walk way out to the far right edge. And it looks like we're settling into a height of 1 out there. And my second question, what is the limit as x approaches negative infinity? And I'll walk to the far left edge of the screen, and it looks like we're settling into a height of negative 1. Graphs becoming very predictable and well-behaved, as we like to say. All right, our, our last uh, problem we're going to pose tonight is, I think, certainly the most thought-provoking. Uh, if you've kind of been yawning through the earlier half of the lesson, then I think this might uh, put a little pep in your step here. What we've done is we've given you six different criteria that the function must obey. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a possible sketch of f that satisfies these six criteria. Now, our graphs could all technically look a little different, but we're going to have certain common characteristics by the time we're all said and done. I'm going to walk you through this really nice and slow. Um, number one here. What are they trying to tell me in number one? They said the limit as x approaches 2 from the left side equals 3. What I'm going to do, okay, as x equals 2, I'm going to find a height of 3. I'm going to put an open circle there. Now, I may end up closing it later on. I don't know. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little tail to the left side that reminds me that I've got to come in and I've got to approach that open circle from the left side, okay? Number two here. This time I'm going to approach 2 from the right side, and I'm going to approach a height of 1. So what I'm going to do is at x equals 2, I'm going to identify a height of 1. And again, I may come back and fill that in later, I'm not sure. Um, and I'm going to put a little tail to the right side to remind me of which side I've got to come in and approach from. Criteria number three, ooh, okay, instead of it doing a limit, now I'm actually going to put a closed circle. And I'm not going to close in either of those two previous circles because it says I've got a height of six. So I'm going to go way up here and I'm going to put a closed circle of six. Okay, um, let's see, criteria four, as we approach negative three from the left side, the curve has a height of infinity. Anytime we describe the height of a curve being infinity, um, we're, we're now describing a vertical asymptote of some sort. So at negative 3, I'm definitely feeling an asymptote coming in here. 
And so what I'm going to do is, since on the left side it's going to be a positive, I'm going to just kind of do a little something like that. Criteria 5, we're approaching negative 3 from the right side, and we have a height of negative infinity. So we're going to kind of be down in this neighborhood right here, way down south. And the last one here, now we said anytime x itself approaches infinity, now we're describing a horizontal asymptote. So you just got to pay attention to where your infinity is. If it's out here, it's a vertical. If it's in here, it's a horizontal. Okay, and there's a horizontal asymptote at 5. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a dotted line here at 5. You can make it as faint or as bold as you want, I guess. Um, all right, so here's what I've got cooking. And certainly we're going to take some liberties here because they didn't tell us a ton of information. So, you know, what you do from this point on, I don't care how low you go with that graph as long as you go to the edge of your paper. And then we're going to pick up here. We're going to approach that open circle. We're going to pick up our pencil. We're going to go down here to this one, and we're going to just approach that asymptote and exhibit that kind of behavior where it's becoming predictable and approaching that asymptote. So those are some uh, good practice ones. We're definitely going to get some more practice on the homework with that sheet. And if you have any trouble, come in, pop in before school, and we'll chat. All right. Have fun. Good luck.